Today, home prices, tis but a flesh wound. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where I'm latest post covering finance and property news. And yes, I've still got my cold. Well, it's an interesting time with regard to property markets at the moment, and there are a number of factors potentially beginning to move the dial. The prospects of another interest rate rise on Melbourne Cup Day has shaken buyers' confidence, sending auction clearance rates to their lowest level in seven months according to CoreLogic. Prelim results showed 68.5% of the reported auctions across the combined capital cities were successful, which is 2.3 percentage points lower than the previous weekend, weaker than the average for this time of the year. I have to tell you that I have this vision of the Black Knight and tis but a flesh wound coming to my mind at the moment because there are many factors, of course, driving the market potentially sideways or even down now. When it comes to the number of homes taken to auction, they soared to 3,383, which is the largest volume since the week before Easter last year. Tim Lawless, CoreLogic Research Director, said such a large number of auctions was always going to test the depth of buyer's demand. Basically, it has not passed the test as shown by the lower clearance rates, which lines up with the renewed speculation that interest rates are about to go higher once again, he said. And, as reported in the AFR, a build-up in home listings and worsening affordability slashed the rate of house price growth by a third to 1.9% across the combined capital cities during the September quarter, according to Domain. Nicola Powell, Domain's Chief of Research and Economics, said the pace of price increases would moderate further amid rising supply. But, she said, the prospect of another interest rate increase was unlikely to halt the broad upswing and reverse the earlier gains. Well, we'll see about that, shall we? The pace of house price growth definitely eased dramatically in Sydney as the number of new listings grew. The higher-than-expected inflation data for the third quarter, released on Wednesday, has prompted some economists to predict another interest rate rise as early as next month. Another lift in interest rates is a concern because it will increase the cost of debt and reduce borrowing capacity further. But a lot of people have already priced in another rate hike, so it's unlikely to significantly impact demand, Dr. Powell said. It's also worth noting that the housing market moved into recovery at a time when the RBA was rising interest rates aggressively and when consumer sentiment was deeply negative. House prices have almost fully recovered from the recent downturn and are on track to hit record high levels by the end of the year, Dr. Powell said. We're expecting prices to continue rising but at a much more subdued pace due to increased listings and reduced borrowing capacity, she said. Fresh listings are now coming onto the market quicker that they're being purchased, so total supply is building up, indicating the market dynamics are slowly changing. And we also can't underestimate the negative impact of stretched affordability, which is helping contain price growth. Cost of living pressures, higher mortgage costs, and higher serviceability buffer limit borrowing capacity, and make it hard for some to qualify for a home loan as prices have nearly recovered. The deacceleration in house price growth was most evident in Sydney, where the quarterly gain slowed by more than half to 2.1%, and that coincided with the 14.6% lift in new listings compared to a year ago. Melbourne's housing market recovery gathered a little momentum over the September quarter. House prices rose by 0.6%, which was slightly faster than the 0.4% gain in the previous quarter. That's well below the 2.8% historical average. Fresh stock did rise over the year, but at a milder 2.0%. Brisbane house prices have increased by 1.4% over the past three months, easing marginally from the previous quarter, helped by the sharp drop of 19.2% in new listings. And the lift in new listings has pushed total supply above the five-year average in Melbourne, Canberra and Hobart. 
but Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth remain severely undersupplied. Many of our capital cities are still grossly undersupplied compared with the five-year average, so the fresh stock will take some heat out of the market, but it is unlikely to reverse the recovery, Dr. Powell said. On the demand side, the strong population growth and tight rental market would likely fast-track home buying decisions for some people, while those who've been waiting to buy would be enticed. Adelaide and Perth recorded the highest house price gains over the quarter at 4.4% and 3% respectively. House prices in Canberra climbed by 1.8% and Hobart by 1.9%, while Darwin posted zero growth for the quarter. In the unit market, all capital cities posted quarterly gains in prices except Canberra and Hobart, while values declined. And meanwhile, Adelaide, Perth and Melbourne notched the largest quarterly gains of 4%, 3.3% and 3.2% respectively. But if you take a slightly longer term view, the average annual price growth in Sydney was 8.1% for houses, 0.4% in Melbourne, 3.3% in Brisbane, 8.4% in Adelaide. They've fallen by 2.9% in Canberra. They've risen by 10.4% in Perth. They've fallen by 3.2% in Hobart. They've fallen by 8.1% in Darwin. And the combined capitals was up 5.1%, according to Domain. The units story over the last year showed that units in Sydney on average were up 2.1% according to Domain, up 1.4% over the last 12 months in Melbourne, up 7.8% in Brisbane, up 15.1% in Adelaide, down 5.3% in Canberra, up 4.2% in Perth, down 15.5% in Hobart, up 3.2% in Darwin, and the combined capitals was 2.7%. So it's worth noting immediately that, of course, the price action is quite different between units and houses and across different states. This is something which gets lost often in the reporting. And with the variations in supply and demand and with the absolute price of houses, there's no surprise that we see variations around the place. But all of the atmospherics suggest to me that the momentum will continue to ease because of these interest rate rises and because real wages are still not growing. And with inflation remaining stickier for longer, and therefore rates higher for longer, this will play out. So tis a flesh wound for now, but it may not be later. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge, and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au. And if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.